Welcome everybody to another tutorial from Organian's Puzzle Box. I, well, this is not necessarily a tutorial, it's more of a showcase of how to use VDBs in Unreal Engine, what you need to do to get the plugin installed and how to activate it in Unreal Engine and then use it. And I go through some very essential settings for you to get the best possible looking VDB in Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm using a principal shader approach and I will explain why exactly I'm doing this. And I'm sure you guys are gonna have a lot of fun uh, putting this together. If you want to support the platform, if you want me to you know, go and buy myself a, a new cup of coffee, as you can see, this is quite empty, then please feel free to support the channel by having a look at my projects on uh, Art Station Gumroad or Patreon, and feel free to, uh, you know, uh, have a look at that and see if anything interests you. And uh, yeah, so without any further delay, let's uh, begin uh, putting together a scene uh, in which we will render a nebula in Unreal Engine 5. So uh, first things first, before we actually open Unreal Engine and do anything with it, we need to get the uh, um, VDB uh, plugin that was released by Adios Montreal. And you can find this if you go on Google and type in Unreal Engine VDB, pretty much the first link will be this. So you'll be greeted with this uh, page on GitHub and you need to get it from here. Now there's some information down here how you can get this installed and what to do. But effectively what, effectively what you are interested in is in this uh, particular part right here. The first thing you want to do is download the pre-compiled package from releases. So when you click it, they will show you different releases for different versions of Unreal Engine. So this is the one that we're going to use. I'm going to left click on this. And then right about here, you have the option to download it. So you want to get the sparse volumetrics for UE 5.1.1. Save that wherever you want to save it. It should be pretty uh, quick to download. And then once you um, have it, you need to extract it. So I'm going to use um, uh, 7-zip for that. Uh, once you extract it and you go into the folder, you will have, uh, well, you'll have this folder basically. You need to copy this wherever your Unreal Engine installation is. So uh, for me, I'm just gonna go to wherever I've got my, you know, um, Unreal Engine installed. Um, and that would be, um, over here so in this folder we you know in, in the folder of unreal engine 5.1 we have a folder called engine so you double click that one and then in here you have another one called plugins and that's where i have copied it you can see it in here i already have it but you need to copy that you know copy this and paste it in here not the archive but the folder and then that's it you just close this and open unreal engine open a new project make sure you take um, a ray tracing if you want to use the path tracer to render these but if you just want to use the normal engine with lumen and so on then you can do that you don't need to enable ray tracing to be able to do it um so yeah let's uh, go into unreal and let's start setting up our scene i also very quickly want to add that if you want to use these vdbs in real time especially in the method that i'm going to be using at the quality that i'm going to use it will be almost impossible to get a playable frame rate with these but instead, if you want to be able to use volumetric nebulas in real time in your games, then please have a look at my cinematic. I'm going to put a link probably around here. Uh, just, a, you know, around, well, the link is going to be in the description, but you can now see where I've got my uh, render for a volumetric nebula in Unreal Engine that plays quite well in real time as well. Um, the link to that video will also take you to the link of where you can get a project as well from Patreon or whatever. Uh, so yeah, feel free to give it a go or have a look at my space creation series if you want to make a space in Unreal Engine. That could be quite fun and then you can employ all of those things that you find you you learn in those tutorials to make a you know bustling space scene in unreal engine well, now that we're on, in unreal engine um we can start working on importing our vdb now for me the most important thing uh, always is to make sure that the plugin is enabled in any project that i'm going to be using this in and you can do this by going to the plugin folder right there at the top of uh, plugin window 
and then if you've uh, installed the VDB, you should be able to see sparse volumetric using open VDB and nano VDB. So once you take this box, you basically are able to import VDBs without any particular problems. Um, so I have got a VDB that I'm going to add, which I have named um, 44. Um, so uh, I've got some of some some VDBs here in this folder, um, and um, you know I'm actually I'm gonna get 43 rather than 44, so I'm just gonna go in that folder. Um, let me just also uh, rename this to 43. So I'm gonna go into the folder, and then over from here I can drag any of these. So normally with this particular VDB collection, I'm going to use the purple, well the medium, uh, the medium res. If I try to import the high res, it could crash the system if I don't want uh, if I don't uh, scale it down enough. But that's why I'm always using like the medium size. So I'll drag that in, and when I do, you know, just just drag and drop it in the in the Unreal Engine. Um, there should be a import option that comes through. Now this uh, can take a bit of time depending on how big the VDB file is. So then you'll get these uh, options depending on how the VDB is um, sort of set up. But in this particular case we've got a um, CD which would be like um, a sort of like a color or uh, it could be like a color of the of the whole thing of the density or it could be a heat, temperature, flames. It really depends on what the VDB style of export is. Now we want to bring both of these in and I can I can select the quantitization type which normally I would recommend of FP4 or 8. So the more you go on this the more detail you lose. But let's do FP4. You can see it's here in here it says how many voxels it's got, what's the dimension of this. So I'm just going to press import and once I do that, then the engine will uh, load that, uh, you know, the, the VDB file in here. And for some reason, there's an error with this. I don't understand why this import isn't working properly. But what I normally do is I drag it again in here. Uh, I'll get the import box again. And this time I will uh, disable CD and just get the density. And that will then bring the density over into the content folder as well. So pretty much fixing that problem. So you see, we've got both of them there. So I like to set up some really, you know, good looking VDB so that's why when I go up here I will now have an option to type in VDB and I'll be able to see these options. So what I normally do is I use a VDB principled actor which is uh, the more high definition version of the VDB but it doesn't allow you to like control a material like you would in a, in a normal shader. So now we can uh, just press the uh, VDB, the principal VDB um, material and uh, all component and that will add it into the world and it's currently empty. So in the density float in here, I can actually select this density and just drag that in there. And now the VDB is added. And because the scale is too small, I'm just gonna make it bigger in this particular instance. So now you can see it around here. Let me just drag it towards where we've got that rail. Um, it's still quite small, so I'm gonna make it bigger. Um, now you can, well, actually even bigger. So, you know, because I've, I've got a very large scene here, that's why it needs to be so big. Now you'll notice that you, you can't really make out any of the detail in here and that doesn't look very good. So we've got to play with some of the settings. Now, one thing in here is the samples per pixels. You can increase this between, you know, from one to 10 or whatever, but every, every option will differ. Uh, based on the VDB that you're importing and how dense it is to begin with. Because if you go too large on samples per pixel, then your performance will suffer. Let's just bring the FPS uh, stat in here as well. So we've got, uh, you know, we're getting maximum FPS right now, but uh, you know, if I put this to maybe like 50, uh, it's still not doing anything. And that's because I don't have the step size, it's too large. So let's just put it down back to 10, but I will decrease the step size. So if you want to get better resolution, You've got to increase the samples per pixel for less jittering and you want to decrease the step size for more resolution which will just increase the quality overall of a VDB file on display. Be mindful that this is running on a 4090 video graphics card. Um, now some other options that we've got in here, we've got the colored transmittance button which if you keep this on then it will be expecting some form of, uh, you know, well, you'll actually see it when, when I get to it. So basically, you'll notice that if I untick this, this color completely takes over. With this on, it will also, it will look based on the density of it. So we want to turn on trilinear interpolation to reduce the jittering of this, but we're still not able to properly see it. So 
One thing is the density multiplier and depending on the VDB, this might require more or less. It, I, 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 do, I wouldn't know how much density you'll need because it really depends on what kind of VDB you've got. But depending from the you know the software that you're using to basically generate this, you will have different uh, density uh, number and density values. So based on whatever you're inputting in here, you can make the density of this uh, nebula a lot thicker or a lot thinner. But it really all comes down to how you've exported it out of your original software and how much uh, you know how how much density you've got from there. And uh, increasing the density in general can improve the performance of using this, while having lower values uh, will, you know, affect your performance. You can then start adding colors to it, so any tint that you select from this color palette will be added to the VDB. And based on density, uh, so for example with this particular color, wherever the, it's denser, it will become a lot more uh, hot. And then if you disable color transmittance, you will get that color applied. Uh, everywhere and then you can also add an emission which can also be colored and an emission of strength of one as you can see already pretty much affects the entire color but if you uh, you know um, turn on color transmittance you'll get different values then you can just keep on uh, you know uh, uh, getting different colors added uh, different uh, you know um, intensities like you know zero emission looks actually quite good when you have a nice color palette selected and just toy around with this as much as as much as possible um, and you know be mindful of the effects that you're getting um, be um, I mean it really all depends on what kind of nebula nebula you're using not all of them will look as nice as this one because uh, again it's dependent on where you created it uh, then you've got these options in here where you know you got the color vector that you can add so if you can export this you can actually add the color from your original software you can also add uh, a temperature which is this cd was a resident by a color but once you do add it you'll notice that the fps has dropped dramatically uh, because this is now calculating color and density. Oh, and if you're wondering where these VDBs come from, um, you can get them from Pixel Lab. I'll put a link in the description below. You can actually go in and get them from there. You can buy them from their amazing collections. I believe these nebulas are created using Houdini and they are fantastic. I would recommend them with, you know, for everybody, they, they can use, they can be used in any software that can read VDB. So give them a look. I'm sure you'll be surprised, pleasantly surprised about the vastness of the collection that they're offering and how good they really are. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of part one, where we talk about how to use, how to install the plugin, how to get the VDBs going, uh, you know, how to use them in Unreal Engine. And now we're going to go to part two, if you're still interested in watching how I've, uh, you know, put the uh, sequence together for the render. Um, so the render is a bit different um, in part two when I put it together, as opposed to what you saw at the front of this when I did the original, you know, the other render. Um, but yeah, have a look. So if you want to support the channel, consider joining Patreon, having a look at my at my project on Artstation or Gumroad. Please feel free to support uh, the Arganians puzzle box and uh, yeah I would like to thank you to all my sponsors all my patrons and all my Creo members I wish you guys the best and uh, thank you for supporting the platform and I'll see you in part two where we're gonna go through some of the more refined details of how I use VDBs to create um, space scenes uh, so yeah see you then